Christianity spread in Egypt. God honors the humble people. Coptic language is the language of our fathers, which is enriched with a multitude of hymns. Walk by faith and not by sight. والأساقفة والكهنة والشمامسة وكل الشعب المحب للمسيح اتفقنا جميعا بطيب قلب فانتخبنا الأنبا شنودة بابا وبطريرك ورئيس أساقفة للكرسي الرسولي كرسي القديس مرقس الإنجيلي as an accomplished scholar in Christian education, a steadfast devotee to the monastic life, a true shepherd to the flock, a fervent preacher of the word to all nations, and laborer towards peace and unity, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III has ushered the Coptic Orthodox Church into a prolific era. A man of God his entire life, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III had a profound love for God and the Church from a very early age. By the age of 16, he was active in the Sunday School movement and later founded the youth meetings of the Coptic Orthodox Church. When His Holiness graduated from Cairo University, he joined the Coptic Orthodox Seminary and upon graduation joined the faculty of the seminary. In 1954, His Holiness chose the solitude of the Egyptian desert and the angelic life of monasticism over life in the world. As a monk and later a monk priest, Father Antonios El Soriani became a hermit and lived in a cave for a period of six years. In 1962, he was called by the late Pope Carolus VI to be consecrated Bishop of Christian Education and Dean of the Coptic Orthodox Theological Seminary. His deep spiritual and educational background has largely determined the direction of the present movements of Christian education. On November 14, 1971, after the departure of His Holiness Pope Carolus VI, His Grace Bishop Shenouda was consecrated as His Holiness Pope Shenouda III, 117th Pope of Alexandria and Patriarch of the See of St. Mark. A profound theologian, a gifted preacher, a talented author, and a spiritual father, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III is indeed a chosen vessel of our Lord. Although His Holiness has traveled the world over, his heart remains that of a simple hermit. His love for the ascetic life has been reflected in the monastic revival he has initiated over the last 30 years of his blessed papacy. His Holiness has been instrumental in rebuilding and renovating many deserted monasteries that had previously been neglected. His papacy gave birth to eight monasteries outside of Egypt, located on four continents, Africa, Australia, Europe, and North America. His Holiness's zeal for the ascetic life has inspired many within the church to answer the call to consecrate their lives and serve God through the monastic life. His Holiness has also given special attention to the ministry of women in the Coptic church. Thousands of female servants teach catechism in Sunday school, youth meetings, and family meetings. There are also women that teach in the Coptic Institute and the Biblical Institute not to mention the many women who serve in the fields of social work, medicine, and education. By establishing an order for deaconesses, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III has significantly enhanced the role of women within the Coptic Church. His Holiness commented on the importance of women in the Church, saying, We want girls and women to give their lives to God to serve the Church. Lay people not only accept the special service of deaconesses and consecrated girls, but also respect it and need it. As head of the oldest and largest church in Africa, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III has made it a priority to extend the apostolic mission of St. Mark across all of Africa. In June 1976, His Holiness ordained His Grace Bishop Antonios Marcos, Bishop of African Affairs. Then in June 1995, His Holiness ordained His Grace Bishop Poulos as Bishop for Mission and Evangelism. Both of their graces have tirelessly trekked the African continent 
bringing all to the light of Jesus Christ. Their service has borne fruit in the form of thousands of converts to the Lord. And while the African missions have flourished under the guidance of His Holiness, His love for Christ has also brought great strides in introducing the Gospel to South America, the Caribbean, and Europe. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. His Holiness is a peacemaker indeed, for his efforts towards unity and peace are not limited to Egypt, but have extended to the world at large. Pope Shenouda has met with various world leaders throughout the years in order to further peace and to construct what he refers to as bridges of love. On many occasions, His Holiness has spoken out advocating for the weak and called on all to act with a spirit of cooperation and unity. In recognition of His Holiness's international efforts, on November 16, 2000, His Holiness was presented with the UNESCO Prize for the promotion of tolerance and nonviolence. His Holiness is also well known for his deep commitment to Christian unity. In all his ecumenical endeavors, he has stood out as a great Christian leader who can be described as the Saint Athanasius of the 20th century. Over the past 30 years, His Holiness has invested tremendous time and effort to expand the role of the Coptic Orthodox Church in theological dialogues and participation in ecumenical bodies and conferences. His Holiness has emphasized that Christian unity must be founded upon a unity of faith and not upon a unity of jurisdiction. To this end, His Holiness has initiated and closely monitored theological dialogue with the Eastern Orthodox Church, Roman Catholic, Anglican and Presbyterian Churches, the Swedish Church, and the World Alliance of Reformed Churches. The restoration of full communion between the two families of Orthodoxy is particularly an ecumenical priority for Pope Shenouda. Following a series of preliminary consultations, His Holiness advocated the commencement of official dialogue between the two families of Orthodoxy. In early 1985, an international commission for the Inter-Orthodox Theological Dialogue was established. In June 1989, His Holiness chaired the conference of the commission and guided the conference in adopting the Christological formula of St. Cyril of Alexandria. On November 12, 1990, Following the historic meeting of the Commission in Switzerland, His Holiness convened a special sitting of the Holy Synod, during which the Christological formula was ratified, the baptisms of the Eastern Orthodox Churches were recognized, and an agreement was reached to begin the process of lifting the anathemas on the Eastern Orthodox Fathers and Councils. His Holiness has also worked to strengthen relations with the Catholic Church. In May 1973, His Holiness Pope Shenouda III paid a historic visit to His Holiness the late Pope Paul VI in Rome. This was the first meeting between an Alexandrian and Roman pontiff since the time of the Great Schism of 451 AD. Both popes signed a common declaration containing, among other things, a confession of common faith in the mystery of the Word Incarnate. Following this historic encounter, a joint commission was established to explore the road to full intercommunication between the two apostolic churches. The efforts of the Commission produced an agreed statement on Christology, which was signed by Pope Shenouda on the 12th of February, 1988. His Holiness has also included the Anglican Church in his ecumenical efforts. In October 1987, His Holiness and the former Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Dr. Robert Runcie, signed the first ever declaration between the leaders of the Coptic Orthodox and Anglican Churches, expressing mutual commitment towards full unity. In March 1990, His Holiness chaired the meeting of the Oriental Orthodox Anglican Forum and stated that all dialogue should be based on biblical teachings. Fostering amicable relations with other churches has been of great significance to His Holiness. His ecumenical work is much too extensive to comprehensively discuss here. Pope Shenouda has not only worked for unity with individual churches, but has also taken leadership roles in various international ecumenical organizations. He has given particular attention to the Coptic Church's involvement in the Middle East Council of Churches and the All-Africa Conference of Churches. In February 1991, His Holiness headed a delegation of 11 members of the Coptic Orthodox Church to the 7th Assembly of the World Council of Churches in Canberra, Australia. At the conclusion of the Assembly, His Holiness was elected as one of eight presidents of the World Council of Churches, representing the Oriental Orthodox Churches and the Middle East region. In November 1994, 
His Holiness headed a delegation of seven members to the Middle East Council of Churches at its assembly in Cyprus and was later elected one of the four presidents of the Middle East Council of Churches. In no way can this small presentation wholly encompass the full magnitude and importance of His Holiness's work. We ask that God continue to bless us for many years with the treasure that is His service. Define faith. And our Bible verse for today comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And St. Paul says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Unfortunately, for this segment, we will give you the materials after we're done because we don't want to spoil all the fun for you. With that said, let's take out a specimen. Here we have an ordinary. What do you call this, Dr. Noodle? I believe it's a fruit called a banana, and I thought you were the smarter one. Anyway, now let's call up on stage one of our guest visitors. Hi, Mom. Hi, Hi. ma'am. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Johnny, I'm from New York, and I'm so, so excited to be here. It's nice to have you with us, Johnny. Now we have a simple question for you today. Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Is this banana slice? It's not even peeled. No. My final answer is no. Well, my dear John, you are wrong. Huh? As my colleague is demonstrating, this banana was strategically sliced before the show with a needle. Now, Johnny, let me ask you something. Do you believe in a substance called air? Yes. How, how else can we live? Well, did you... Do you see this air? No. Did you initially see a sliced banana? No. So you were certain it was whole? Yes. This, Johnny, is what St. Paul is talking about, believing without seeing. As Christians, we are asked to walk by faith and not by sight. Now let's have a bonanza. Coptic language is the language of our fathers and we are using it in our liturgical worship. So it's very easy to learn how to read Coptic. We're going to learn how to read Coptic by first be familiarize ourselves with the Coptic letters. Coptic letters are 32 letters. 25 of them are from the Latin letters, 
from alpha to omega, from alpha to omega, and the rest are the seven from a demotic origin, from the chi to the t. First, we let us read together, be familiarized with the Coptic alphabet. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, E, Su, Zeta, Eta, Sita, Yota, Kappa, Lulla, Mei, Nei, Exi, U, P, Rho, Sima, Tav, Epsilon, Phi, Ki, Epsi, A, Shai, Phi, Chai, Huri, Ganga, Chima, T. From Alpha to Omega is 25 Latin letters, and from the Shai to the T are seven from the Matic, and all these 32 letters we can read the Coptic language. The first group of letters are groups look like English and pronounce like English. So if you know the English language, you know all these 13 letters. Alpha is like an A in English. Vita like a B in English. E like E in English. Zeta like Z in English. Yota like the I in English. Kappa like the K in English. May like the M in English. Nay like the N in English. O like the O. Sima like the C. Tav like the T. O like the W. And the last one is T, which is a combined between two letters. The T and the I. We combine them together and it becomes T. So the I comes on top of the T and make one letter, we call it T. T or Tav plus the I or the Yota in Coptic makes up T. Tav and the Yota is T. So these 13 letters from uh, Alpha to T, 13 letters, they look like English letter and pronounce like English letters. Let us practice about reading some of these letters. Like here in for Zeta. Za, ze, zi, zo, az, ez, iz, oz, zoon, zoi, an, zib. Let's try another letter, the kappa. Ka, K, Ki, Ko, Ak, Ek, Ik, Ok, Anok, Kata, Oik, Cosmos. Let's practice some 
about the may, which like the M in English. Ma, me, me, mo, am, em, im, om, nem, nim. This is the uh, ni, same like N in English. Na, ne, ni, no, an, en, in, on. Nai, nim, nem, nane, sima. Sima in Coptic is always like S. Never comes like K sounds like car or cat in English. No, it's always like an S. Sa, se, si, so. As, es, is, os. This is a chai. If we put a sa, and a chai together, sach, sim. This letter which look like H in English, but in Coptic is really double E, we call it eta. So in order to read this, will we, that's an E, E, sini. Let's practice some about the tav, which is the T in English. Ta, te, ti, to, at, et, it, ot, tonk, tai, to te, yot, ten. This uh, one which look like upside down S, it's the H in Coptic. We call it Huri. So that's why we say ten. Ten. So now we are familiar with 13 letters out of the 32 letters which look like English. These letters look like English, pronounced like English. The alpha, the vita, the e, zeta, yota, kappa, mei, nei, u, sima, tav, o, t. The vita, it could be said like a b or v, but when we do that, Vita is normally like a B, but if there is a vowel letter after it, it will convert the beta from B to V. Over here, it's ab, eb, ib, ob. Va, ve, vi, vo. Val, because there is a vowel letter after the beta, this will be a V. Vol, the A, which look like the W in English, it's also considered a vowel letter. Vol, P O W, Echo Web, Chips. There is an exception for this, which is Tov. Welcome to Mystery Sing! I am Stephen the Deacon, and this is my partner, Peter the Cantor. 
We have an exciting show prepared for you today. Peter, start us off with the first clue. The name of today's mystery saint was known as John in Hebrew. He was one of the first writers of a divine liturgy, still used by our church today. This mystery saint preached in Libya, Egypt, and the surrounding areas. Wow, that's cool! We're going to give you just a few seconds to figure out who this mystery saint is. Tune in for the answers and the story after these messages. Good evening and welcome to Coptic Media Productions, CMP. I'm Mayor Abdel Malik. Hi, and I'm Sandy Yacoub. We hope that you are enjoying tonight's program. We pray that you see the importance in using this program as yet another tool in preaching the gospel and strengthening your faith. CMP is devoted to presenting the riches of the Coptic Orthodox Church through innovative means. We have exciting segments planned for you, some of which include preserved Coptic hymns and music, spiritual contemplations, historical documentaries, explanations of church rites, as well as youth and family issues. In order to make this effort possible and to continue this ministry, your generous donations would be greatly appreciated. With your support, CMP's programming and educational services will help enrich the lives of all of our viewers. Please send checks to St. Mark Preaching Ministry at P.O. Box 6909, East Brunswick, New Jersey, 08816. If you'd like to donate by credit card, please visit us online at copticmedia.org. While you're there, we'd love to hear from you. Please help us improve the service with your suggestions and ideas. We'd like to thank you, and we ask that you please pray for this mission. Welcome back! Are you ready for the answer? Let's give it to them, Stephen. Today's mystery saint is St. Mark, who was one of the four gospel writers. He was an evangelist, which means he spread the word out to many countries, including our beloved Egypt. He also was a devoted apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, wasn't it also his house that the Last Supper took place in? Yes, dear brother Peter. And that ends our show for today. We hope you learned a little something about one of our amazing saints. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye! Sins, that he may forgive us our sins. 
Blessings of God from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 20, uh, starting from verse 20. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on the left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. So he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, 
but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my father. And the ones that then heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to himself and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This story is about seeking the greatness and what is the right way to seek the greatness. As we are celebrating for the feast of Saint Mary, we remember her greatness. And in our church, in the Coptic Orthodox Church, we always mention the greatness of Saint Mary, as in the Midnight Braise, there is a saying that says, Your greatness, O Mary, the undefiled virgin, is like it to the height of the palm tree as spoken by Solomon. You may wonder, what are the reasons of St. Mary greatness? And what are the way to become a great person? So we'll talk about four points. Number one, what greatness do you seek? And number two, who makes you great? And number three, what is the way of greatness? And number four, why this way? Number one, what greatness do you seek? You may ask, are, are there kinds of greatness? Yes, there are many kinds of greatness. But what kind of greatness you seek? When the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus, the Lord answered them, saying, You do not know what you are asking. Are you serious about what you are asking for, to be at the right hand and the left hand in my glory? Or what kind of greatness you are looking for, you are seeking for? There is a kind of greatness, worldly greatness. This kind of greatness is the authority and the wealth, the worldly wealth. As our Lord Jesus Christ said to them, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. So this kind of greatness is not acceptable by our Lord Jesus Christ. He warned them not to seek this kind of authorized greatness or as the Gentiles do. Some people also may look to greatness in doing miracles, even this is not the kind of greatness that our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us to seek. We should not seek to be miracle performers. If God gave us a, a gift to do miracles, this is a gift from God. And we should be thankful for. But otherwise, we should not seek for such kind of greatness. 
and Matthew 7, 22 to 23. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell you, and then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. Amazing to find a group of people who are performing miracles in the name of the Lord. And at the end, the Lord tells them, away from me, I do not know you. You are evildoers. So this is not a kind of greatness that we should seek for. Also the holy priesthood. The holy priesthood is a grace from God. But we should not go behind it. Or we should not seek priesthood just to attain greatness. Or just to take honor. And this St. Paul said about in Hebrews 5, 4 to 5, no one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God. If God called you for priesthood, this is something from God, just as Aaron was. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son, Today I have become your father. So the priesthood is not something you desire for just to attain greatness. The book of Luke, the Gospel of St. Luke, we hear the archangel saying about St. John the Baptist that he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Actually, this is the kind of greatness that we should look for, to be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from birth. He is away from any kind of vain greatness. He is away from feeling of self-greatness due drinking wine or other fermented drink. But he is great in the sight of the Lord, and he is filled by the Holy Spirit. So this is the kind of greatness that we should seek for, to be great in the sight of the Lord, and to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And point number two, if this is the kind of greatness we should seek for, you may wonder, who makes you great? In this discussion between the sons of Zebedee and their mother and our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ stated a truthful fact. He said to them, to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. So the one who makes you great is the Father. And the one who prepares greatness for you is the Father. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, he said about himself, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My Father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. So it is a very strong teaching and lesson that we should seek the glory and the greatness from God himself, not to glorify ourselves. It is the Father who has prepared for us greatness and glory in the kingdom of heaven. And in the day of judgment, 
our Lord Jesus Christ will welcome us to the glory of the Father prepared for us from the before the foundation of the world. In Matthew 25, 34, then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. This is the greatness that we should look for and we are waiting for. It is from the hand of the Father and prepared by the Father. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. The Father has prepared for us amazing, wonderful, glory, greatness that we never thought about. And the Lord Jesus Christ told us a story about two persons, the Pharisee and the tax collector, who went to the temple and the Pharisee started to glorify himself and praise himself. But the tax collector started to humble himself before the Lord. At the end of the story, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So we should not glorify ourselves, or praise ourselves, or exalt our, ourselves, but we should humble ourselves before the Lord, and the Lord will exalt us, will honor us, will make us great. So this is the kind of greatness, number one, the greatness before the Lord in the sight of the Lord with the filling of the Holy Spirit. And secondly, it is the Father who makes us great. And thirdly, what is the way to greatness? Once our Lord Jesus Christ was talking to the crowd, and then a woman called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So to be great in the sight of the Lord, to be blessed, you need first to hear the word of God and obey it. St. Mary, the virgin, the mother of God, was called the blessed and Luke first before she became the mother of God, before she gave birth to our Lord Jesus Christ. And the archangel greeted her that she is full of grace. You know why? Because before becoming the mother of God, before becoming the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ, she kept hearing the word of God and obeying it. And the Lord Jesus Christ answered the sons of Zebedee, are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, we are able. So if you are serious to be great in the kingdom of God, there is a kind of drink you should drink and there is a kind of baptism you should be baptized with. And the Lord Jesus Christ was talking about his obedience to the point of this, to the words of the Father, to the commands of the Father, 
and he was talking about, he was referring to shedding his blood on the cross. And this is a kind of drink that we should drink. When we drink the blood of Christ, we announce our unity with him and our willingness to be one with him in going through his suffering, his death, and also in his resurrection because of our obedience to the commands of the Father. Are you willing to drink what the Lord Jesus Christ drank? And are you willing to be baptized as the Lord Jesus Christ baptized with? And also the Lord Jesus Christ, in his discussion with the two sons of Zebedee, he told them, and instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So you want to be great, this is the way. Obey the commands of the Lord. Obey the command of the Lord and be willing to serve everyone, to humble yourself and to serve everyone. If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. This is the way that you become great in the sight of the Lord. The way is to obey the commands of God and to humble yourself and to serve others and to serve others. And number four, why this way? Why this way? This way because the Lord Jesus Christ said, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And St. Mary, in her song at the house of Elizabeth, said, He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he but has sent the rich away empty. God is always against the bride. And because of this fact, this is the way to be great in the sight of the Lord, is to humble yourself and to obey his command, because he always against the bride. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. And, and the God looked to the humble. God opposes the proud, but gives the grace to the humble. So when you humble yourself, you will have the grace of God to be great. And also because bride is a reason for division. Bride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. So if you follow your bride, the result is destruction of your life because bride breeds quarrels. And in Proverbs 18, 12, before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honor. And this lesson 
we see it strongly in the life of St. Mary, the mother of God. And St. Mary mentioned this fact in her song. She said, He has regarded the lovely state of his maid servant, for behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. It is because of her humbleness that the Lord regarded her, that the Lord bestowed his grace upon her. And finally, this is the command of St. Paul to everyone who seeks greatness, who seeks the glory of God. In his epistle to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the way to be exalted and glorify it and be great in the sight of the Lord and glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.